If you're building a blog or community style website, having nested comments is an essential part of your application scaling. But implementing nested comments can come with some interesting technical challenges. In this video, we're going to overcome those technical challenges by building a basic nested comments section. If you would like to follow along, have a look in the description below and you'll find a link to a GitHub repository. In that repository, you'll see two folders, a start and a finished. We're going to start from that start folder. And when we finish, we're going to end up with the final product that you're going to find in that finished folder. If you need to, you can refer to the code in the finished folder if you get stuck along the way. To bootstrap this application, I've used create T3 app and I've just used that because it's a great way to get an application up and running very quickly. So along with TRPC, we're also going to be using Prisma as our database layer. If you would like to implement this logic without Prisma, say you're using Mongo or you're just using some SQL connector, then you can follow along as well. The principles are going to be the same. So let's go over to the browser and have a look at where we are right now with this application. So I'm over here in the browser and I just have this blank application here and we can log in by clicking log in. And I'm just going to log in with the user Tom. And once we've logged in, we can create a post. So I'm just going to create this post here. This is going to be my awesome blog post. And then I'm just going to paste some text in here and click create post. Now that we have a post, our job is to implement a comment section just below this post. Let's go over to the code base and see what we're working with. So you can see I have a start folder here and I have a finished folder. Right now, my start and finished folder are exactly the same, but by the end, my finished folder is going to be the final product. So we have our Prisma folder here and inside of the Prisma folder, we have our schema and we have a lot of stuff in here, but the only thing you need to worry about for now is this post model. And we're also going to add a comment model. If we have a look in our source, we have some components and this is where our comment components will go. We have our pages and inside of API, we have some stuff for auth and for TRPC. We don't need to worry about that. We have a post folder and this is a page for viewing a single post. Then we have a page for creating a post. We have our underscore app and we have an index page that's just going to list out some posts. Inside of server, we have our router we have a post router and this is all complete. We will need to implement the comment router here. And in this comment router, we're just going to implement an endpoint for getting all of our comments for a given post and for creating a new comment. Then we have this helpers folder here. And in this helpers folder, we just have this unit test and we're going to create a function that is going to make this unit test pass. Right now, of course, this file doesn't exist. And so this unit test is going to fail. Once we've implemented a function that satisfies this test, it means that we've formatted our comments into a nested style. So you can see here, we have this comment and then this comment here has some children and then children can also have children and so on. The first thing we need to do is come over to our Prisma schema and create a model for comments. So the interesting thing about the comment model is that it can reference itself. So a comment can have a parent and that's going to be another comment. And then that comment is going to have children, which is going to be an array of comments. Let's start by defining the model. So model comment. I'm going to copy some stuff from our post. So we want our ID here. I'm also going to copy our created at and updated at. Then I'm also just going to copy my body. And this is just going to be the body of the comment. So a comment needs to reference a user. And we already have that set up here for a post. So I'm just going to copy this. And now we're getting an error here. And it says that the user model doesn't have a reference to our comment model. We can fix this manually or we can run Prisma format. So I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to run MPX Prisma format. And you can see that that's fixed our model here. And if we go back up to our user model, you can see that this now has a reference to comments because a user can have an array of comments. So this needs to have two relationships. One, a comment can have a parent and a comment can have many children. So let's implement the parent relationship first. So I'm going to say parent, and this is going to be a comment, and this is going to be optional because if a comment is a root comment, meaning it's a comment on the post, it's not a reply to another comment, then it's not going to have a parent. I'm going to say at relation, and then inside of at relation, I'm going to say comment children. I'm going to have fields and then the field that I'm going to reference is the parent ID. 
and then this is going to reference the ID. So this ID here that it's referencing is this ID on the model. And it's saying we have an error here because we don't have a parent ID. So we can go implement that. And then that is just going to be a string. And of course it's optional. So we have an error here. And this is the same error we had before where a comment referenced a user, but a user didn't reference a comment. So it says here we can run Prism format, but this is not gonna work, unfortunately. We need to do this manually. So let's say children, and then this is going to be an array of comments. So I'm gonna say comment, and then it's going to be an array. Then we're gonna have at relation, and the relation is going to be this comment children. And now this is going to work here, and we can run MPX Prism format, and then this is going to format our file correctly. So to make sure this takes effect, we need to run mpx prisma migrate dev. And then I'm going to call my migration adds comments. And this is going to create a new migration for us. Let's go have a look at this migration. So you can see here we have our adds comments migration. So this is going to create a comments table. And you can see that we have some constraints here. And then we have some other fields as well. So the next thing we need to do is go implement our logic for fetching all of the comments for a post and for creating a comment. So we're gonna come over to server and then come over to router and then comment. If you're not familiar with TRPC, that's okay. This is all going to make sense. I'm going to reference this as if it's a REST API. So the first route that we're going to implement is to get all the comments. So I'm gonna say dot query, and then I'm going to name this query all comments. And then we need to provide a resolver for this query. So if you're familiar with GraphQL, then this is going to look very familiar. This would be your query, and then you need to provide a resolver for the query. So I'm gonna have an object here, and then I'm going to say resolve. And this is going to be a function. It actually needs to be an async function. And we also need to provide some input. So I'm gonna say input, and then our input is going to be a Zod object. So I'm gonna say z.object. If you're not familiar with Zod, it's very similar to say Yup or Joy. So we need to define an object here. This is going to validate our input and it's also going to type it for us. And you're gonna see what that means in just a second. So we wanna have a perma link. So you're gonna be able to get all of the comments for a post by the post permalink. And this is just going to be a string and it's required. Okay, so in our resolver, we need to get context and on context is going to be our Prisma instance. Then we're also going to get input. So I'm going to say const equals input. And you can see here that input is now going to be typed with our permalink. And that's thanks to this object up here. So I'm going to say permalink. Next, I'm going to say const comments is equal to await context.prisma dot comments dot find many. Let's go have a look at our Prisma schema again. And it looks like we've forgotten a reference to the post. So this isn't gonna work yet. We need to add a reference. So I'm gonna say post, and then this is going to be of type post. And then I'm gonna have at relation, and this is gonna say fields. And then I'm going to reference a field called post ID. And then this is going to references the ID on the post. So now we need to add the post ID and this is going to be a string. So our post now needs to reference our comment. So I can say comment. And then this is going to be a type comment. And then this is an array. Let's run MPX Prisma format again. Now we can run mpx prisma migrate dev. And then I'm going to say add post to comment. Okay, so let's go back to our comment here. Now we can find many comments where the post and I want the post permalink to equal our permalink here. So now we can simply return comment and let's rename this comments. So we can also catch an error here. So I'm gonna say try and then catch. And we're gonna catch this error. 
move this into the try block and then I'm going to throw new trpc error and then the code is just going to be bad request. It's also console.log and I'm just going to console.log our error. So now we have our resolver for getting comments. The next thing we need to do is to add some middleware. So I'm going to say dot middleware. Then I'm going to provide an async callback. Inside of this async callback, we're going to get context and we're going to get a next function. At the end of the middleware, we just want to call next. Now we want to say if not context.session.user, then I want to throw new TRPC error. And then the code is going to be unauthorized. And TypeScript is complaining here. And this is because we need to return next. So anything that's going to get called below this middleware here, like our create comment mutation, is going to require that the user is authorized. So now we can add our mutation. And I'm going to call this add comment. And then I'm going to provide an object here again. Our object needs to have some input. And I'm going to type this as a Zod object. We're going to have a body. And this is going to be Zod.string. We're going to have a permalink. This is going to be Zod.string. And this is the permalink of the post. Then we're also going to have a parent ID. This is going to be Zod.string. And in Zod, everything is required by default. So this needs to be dot optional. Okay, so below our input here, we can provide a resolver. So I'm going to say resolve. And I'm going to make this an async function again. Inside the resolver, I'm going to get context and I'm also going to get input. Okay, so now I'm going to destructure input. So I'm going to say const is equal to input. And we're going to get our body. We're going to get our permalink and we're going to get our parent ID that's optional. Next, we want to get a user. So I'm going to say const user is equal to context dot session dot user. And we don't need to check that the user exists because we've done that up here in our middleware. Okay, so now we want to have a try and a catch block. And I'm just going to console.log and I'm just going to log this error. And then if I catch an error, I want to throw a new trpc error. And I'm just going to make the code here bad request. So you'll probably want to test this error to see what it actually is and then throw the appropriate error. Okay, so I'm going to say const comment is equal to await context.prisma.comment.create. Now I want to provide some data. And then the first thing I want to put in here is my body. Next, I need to connect my post. So I'm going to say post. And then I'm going to say connect. And then I want to connect to the post where the permalink is equal to the permalink that we've passed in. Next, I want to connect my user. So I'm going to say user. And I'm going to connect where the user, where the ID is equal to the user dot ID. And next, I want to connect my parent comment if my parent ID is defined. So I'm going to spread here and then I'm going to use some brackets and I'm going to say parent ID and end and then I'm going to have an object. So if parent ID is defined, then I'm going to spread this object onto this data object here. Then I'm going to say parent connect and I want to connect where the ID is equal to the parent ID. And then we want to simply return the comment. Okay, so let's go through this again to make it clear what it is that we're actually doing here. So we're going to create a comment and we're going to create that with our body. We're going to connect our post here and we're going to connect the post where the permalink is equal to the permalink that we've passed in. We're going to connect the user that posted the comment. 
with the ID of the user currently in our session. And then if parent ID exists, then we're going to connect the parent comment where the ID is equal to the parent ID that we've passed in. Okay, so the next thing to do is to go add a comment form to our posts. So I'm going to come over to components here and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this comment. And then inside of comment, I'm going to create a new file. And this is going to be comment form.tsx. So I'm using maintain UI here just for something a little bit different. And maintain UI does come with a form hook built in. If you want to use something like React hook form, it's going to look very similar to that. So I'm going to say function comment form and then export default comment form. Next, I'm going to say const router is equal to use router. Next, I'm going to say const permalink is equal to router dot query dot permalink. And I'm going to say this is a string. Next, I'm going to say const form is equal to use form. And use form, in my case, comes from maintain UI slash form. And I just want to set some initial values on here. And I'm going to say the body. And the body is just going to be an empty string. Next, I want to define a function called handle submit. And then handle submit is going to get some values. And I'm just going to type this now as body and it's going to be a string. Okay, so let's return and I'm just going to return a box which comes from maintain core. Then inside of that box, I want to have a form element. Then inside of the form, I want to have a text area. I want to make this required. I want to make the placeholder your spicy comment. Then I want to make the label is equal to comment. Then I want to spread on the form input props. I'm going to open some brackets and I'm going to spread form dot get input props. And I want to name this field body. Okay, so now we just need a submit button. So I'm going to have a group. And in that group, I'm going to have a button. I'm going to make the buttons type is equal to submit. The text here is going to be post comment. And I want to put some styles on here. So I'm going to say the position here is going to be right. And this means that our button is just going to sit over to the right of the form. Then I want a margin top of MD to add a couple of classes to our box as well. So this is going to be margin top again of MD. And then we're going to have a margin bottom of MD. So let's go attach the comment form to our post. So I'm going to come over to pages, post, and then permalink. And then inside of the container, I'm just going to have my comment form. Let's go over and have a look. As you can see here, we have our comment form and a post comment button. Let's go add a mutation so you can actually create a comment. So the first thing I need to do is to get a mutation. So I'm going to say const is equal to trpc. And this comes from util slash trpc dot use mutation. Then I'm going to pass in an array and we're going to get two mutations here. We're going to get one to create a post and one to create a comment that we just created. So I'm going to use the comment one. Then we're going to get a mutate function. We're going to get an is loading. Then inside of handle submit, I want to construct a payload. So I'm going to say const payload is equal to an object. I want to spread in my values, which is just going to be the body. Then I want to pass in my permalink. And I also want to pass in a parent ID 
and parent ID we're going to pass into the comment form. So let's say parent ID, and then we're just going to make this an optional string. So parent ID is an optional string. Okay, so once we have our payload, I just want to call mutate, and then I want to call mutate with our payload. So in our form here, I want to say on submit, and we're going to call form dot on submit. And then I want to pass in my handle submit function. And then down below, I just want to say is loading on this button. And then this is going to be equal to is loading from our mutation. So we have this parent ID prop here. So if we're posting a reply, I don't really want the reply to say post comment. So I'm going to say if we have a parent ID, then this is going to say post reply. But if we don't have a parent ID, then it can say post comment. Let's go have a look at this and it all looks good. So let's try this out. I'm just going to copy a bit of the text here. Paste it in, paste comment, and then let's open up a new terminal. And in this terminal, I'm going to say MPX Prisma Studio. If when you go to post that comment, you get an error in your console instead of creating the comment, just stop your instance of TFPC and then restart it. So you need to do that whenever you make a change to your schema. So now we can go into our comments here and you can see that we have one comment and it has a post ID, it doesn't have any children, and it doesn't have a parent. So let's go create a component for listing out our comments. So I'm going to come into components and I'm going to create a new component here. And then this is going to be called list comments.tsx. The function list comments exports defaults list comments. Then I want to query for all of my comments. So I'm going to say const is equal to trpc. Again, this comes from util slash trpc dot use query. And we need to pass in an array and then we're going to get our comments or comments. We need to pass in some data here. We need a permalink. So let's say const router is equal to use router and then const permalink is equal to router dot query dot permalink as string. And then we can pass that in as the arguments to our query here. Get our data. And then down the bottom here, we can say return. And I just want to return a box for now. And I want to JSON dot stringify and I want to stringify our data. So next we need to list our comments on our post. So come back over to your post and then I want to list comments. So you can see that we have our comments here. Let's post a few more. Okay, so we have a couple of problems that we want to fix straight away. One, when I post a comment, I want the form to be cleared and I want our comments list here to be updated automatically. So I'm going to come back to our comment form and inside of our mutation, I'm going to have an on success. And this is going to be a callback. And then I want to move my form above the mutation. Then I just want to call form dot reset. And this should clear out our form once it's been successfully submitted. So let's try this again. I'm going to comment. And now our form has been cleared out but we still don't see our comment down below. So what we want to do to fix this is we want to invalidate this comments query here. So to do that, I'm going to say const utils is equal to trpc dot use context. And then in on success, I want to say utils dot invalidate query. Then I want to pass an array and this is an array of queries that I want to invalidate. And the one that I want to invalidate is the comments.all comments. 
and then we need to pass in the parameters that we made the query with, and that is just going to be our permalink. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to copy this here, and that comment appeared. Let's go delete all of our comments so we can see this better. Refresh. So I'm going to post a comment, and you can see our comment appears straight away. So the next thing I need to do is to display the comment in a nicer format. So above list comments, I'm going to create a new function and this is going to be called comment. So I'm going to keep my list comments and comments all in the one file. And the reason I'm going to do that is because list comments is going to render out our comments, but then a comment that has children is going to render out list comments. And that's going to be much easier if they both exist in the one file. So I'm going to have an argument here, and this is going to be a comment. But now I'm just going to type this as any. And then down below, inside of our box, I want to say data.map. And I just want to return our comment. And I want to get my comment here and I'm going to pass in my comment as a prop. I'm also going to have a key, and then the key is going to be comment.id. Then inside of our comment, I'm going to return, and I want to return paper. Paper just comes from main team UI. Okay, so inside of paper, I want to have a box. And then inside of that box, I'm just going to have an avatar. Then I'm going to have another box. Inside of this box, I'm going to have a group. Then inside of that group, I'm going to have some text. This text is going to be comment.user.username. And this needs to be rendered text needs to be imported from maintain UI. And then I'm going to have comment dot created at dot to ISO string. And user needs to be lowercase. Try this out. Okay. So user is undefined on the comment. If we come back to our comment router. You can see that we're querying comments, but we're not populating the user. So let's say inside of our all comments query, include, and I want to include the user, and I'm going to set this to true. Let's come back, refresh. Okay, so now we have our created at date, and we don't have the username, and this is actually user.name. Okay, so now we have the name here. So we're having some problems here and these problems could be easily solved if we typed comment properly. So let's do that now. Inside of utils, I'm going to come into TRPC and I'm going to say export type comment is equal to infer query output. And this is a generic and the query output that I want to infer is comments.all comments. And then I just want to get a single comment here. So this is going to be number. Okay, so let's go use this type. So this is going to be comment. So I'm going to import comment from utils. And I'm just going to import this for now as comment with children. And then this is the type that we're going to create later on. So I'm going to change my any to a comment with children. So comment and comment with children. Okay, so outside of this group, I want to say comment.body. Let's go have a look at this. And you can see we have our comment body, we have the created at date, and we have the user that posted the comment. Let's add a few styles just to make this look a little bit better. So on paper, I'm going to say width border, and then the radius is just going to be MD. Then the margin bottom is going to be medium again. 
and then the padding is also going to be medium. So now we have this border here and our comments are separated nicely. Let's say this box here, so SX, and this is going to be display flex. So I'm going to pass in a function. Then in here, I'm going to say display uh, flex. Then this box, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to make the flex direction and I'm going to make this column. Okay, so this looks okay. Let's just add some padding to the left here. And then this is also just going to be empty. So now we get some nice padding there. Okay, so if I want to reply to one of these comments, I need to have a post reply button here that's going to open up a new comment form. So inside of comment, I'm going to have another component. So function, and I'm going to call this comment actions. This is going to have a comment ID and it's going to have a reply count. So let's say comment ID is going to be a string and then reply count is going to be a number. Okay, so I need to set state. So I'm going to say const is equal to use state. And by default, this is going to be false. And then this is going to be replying and set replying. Now I want to return and I want to return a group. And inside of this group, I want to have some text. And for now, I'm just going to render the reply count. Then I want to render a button. And this button is going to say reply. And then when you click this button, it's going to set replying to not replying. So it's just going to toggle replying from true and false. So if we are replying to so replying, then I want to render the comment form. And I'm just going to reuse the other comment form component that we had before. So this needs to be in a fragment. Let me know in the comment section below if you used React before fragments, it was terrible. Now we're posting a reply, so we have to have a parent ID here. And this parent ID is going to be the comment ID. Okay, so let's render this comment actions. And I'm gonna render this below this last box here. So my comment ID is going to be comment dot ID and my reply count now is just going to be zero and I'm going to get the reply count later on. Okay. So we now have a reply button. When we click it, we can open up the comment form and it's going to close it when we click it again. Let's say the position for our group here that's going to have our apply count and our button is going to be a part. And then I also want to have a margin top here of medium. So our reply button is going to be over on the right and then our reply count is going to be over on the left. So let's post a reply to this comment here. So this is going to be reply one. And we're going to post this reply and we see this appear down the bottom here. And this is not what we want. We want this reply to appear as a child of this comment here. So let's go implement a function that's going to nest it as a child. So we're going to come over to helpers and then we want to implement the format common function. So I'm going to create a new file. This is going to be format comment dot TS. So before I do this, I'm going to come back over to our TIPC utils and then down below comment, I'm going to have a comment with children. So I'm going to export type comment with children is equal to comment and children. And this is going to look a bit weird, but we're going to make the children the type of comment with children. So I'm going to say array 
comment with children. And this array syntax here is the same as saying comment with children and then putting these brackets here. So the reason we're doing this is because you can have a comment and then that comment can have a child and then that child can have a child and so on forever. And so we need to reference comment with children as the children for comment with children. So inside of format comments, I'm going to say function format comment and then I'm going to export default format comment. This is going to take, uh, let's rename this format comments and then this is going to take comments as an argument and this is going to be of type comment and it's going to be an array. So you could create a simpler version of this function, but we're going to format all of our comments in a single pass, which is going to make it seem a little bit more complicated. However, it's going to be much more efficient than a function that does many passes through your comments. So I'm not gonna use that syntax here. I'm gonna use the array. And that's just because we've used this syntax elsewhere. So the first thing I want to do is to define a map. So I'm going to say const map is equal to new map. Next, I want to define our roots. So const roots is equal to an array. And we're going to type this as comments with children. And of course, it's going to be an array of comments with children. At the end of our function, we want to return the roots. So our roots here are all of our root level comments. So these are comments without a parent ID. So we want to loop through all of our comments now. So I'm going to say for let i is equal to zero, i is less than comments.length and i plus plus. If you don't like for loops, you can also use a for each. So the first thing I want to do is to get my current comment ID. So I'm going to say const comment ID is equal to comments. And I want to get the comment with the i value. Next, I want to set this comment inside of our map. So I'm going to say map.set comment ID. And I just want to set the index that we're currently at. Next, I want to modify our comments to add a child array. So comments i dot children is equal to an empty array. So TypeScript is complaining here. So we can cast our comment as comments with children. And next, I want to see if the current comment has a parent ID. So I want to say if comments i dot parent id then i want to get the index of the parent id so i'm going to get that from our map so i'm going to say map dot get comment i dot parent id and I'm going to put this in a variable called const parent comment index. And this is going to be a number. So remember up here, we made the key, the comment ID, and then we set the index. What we're trying to get now is the index for the comment that is this comment's parent. And now we want to push this comment onto the children array for its parent. So I'm going to say comments, parent comment index dot children dot push. And I want to push comment I. Now we have some problems here with TypeScript. So we can wrap our comment parent ID and we can say as comment with children and we can do the same for our comment here. So as comments with children. 
Okay, so if we do have a parent ID, we just want to continue. And the continue here is going to break out of this iteration of the loop, and it's going to continue on to the next iteration. If we don't have a parent ID, we want to push this comment onto the roots. So I can say roots.push. And I want to push comments. And then the current comment. As comments with children. Okay, so let's run yarn test. So our test is failing. And this is because our file here is called format comment. Let's rename that to format comments. So that's going to fix the import here. And then we're passing comments in as an object. We don't need to do that. It can just be comments. And then we can add a cheeky little TS ignore here as well. Let's try this again. So our test is still, so our test is still failing. Let's go have a look at our data here. And I want to have a look at the comment that I'm passing in. And you can see the parent ID here is null. So I want to just check that the parent ID is a string. So I'm going to say if type of comment.parentID is equal to string, and this should be a better check. The function is still failing. And the reason for that is because when we set our map, we have our comment ID here, but this is just going to be the whole comment. Let's make this comment I dot ID, save this, and now our test is passing. We have one little TypeScript error, and we can just put a question mark in here. Now TypeScript is happy, and our test is passing. Let's go back to list comments, and we have a little bit of a problem here. So I want to be able to use this list comment component inside of our comment when we have some more children to render out. However, this component here is going to do a query. We need to lift that query up another layer and inject our comments into the arguments of list comments. So I'm going to say comments, and then this is going to be comments, and then this is going to be comments with children. We now have this comments with children type, so we can remove this comment and as. And we can map through our comments here, and we can cut out all of this. And our comments with children is actually going to be an array. Now we need to have another component, and this is going to be a comment section. So I'm going to create a new file and call this comment section.tsx. I say function comment section. Then I'm going to export defaults comment section. Then I'm going to paste in my logic here to query my comments. I'm going to import trpc from utils. I'm going to import use router. And then I want to return, and I just want to return a box. And I want to put in my list comments. Now I can say comments is equal to data or an empty array. So I need to import box. And just to keep TypeScript happy, I can say comments and end. And then we're going to list out our comments. This is data. So TypeScript is still not happy. And the reason is, is because in comments, we're passing in comments with children, but we're just going to pass in the query here. Let's use our format comments function here. So format comments. And then I want to pass in my data or an empty array. Okay, so now TypeScript is happy. Let's go back to our post. And I'm going to get rid of list comments and I'm going to render out my comment section instead. If you like, you can also move your comment form to the comment section. I think that makes a little bit more sense. And that means that you can just use this component any way you like. Let's say you had another data type, such as a product, and you want to have a comment section on there as well. You could just put this comment section. So let's go render out our comment form. 
Go back and we can see now that this looks good. We have our comment form and this is separate from our comment section. And down here we have our comments. We can reply to a comment. So I'm gonna say this is a reply. Let's post this comment. And you'll notice that this comment doesn't appear here anymore. And the reason for that is because we're only rendering out our root comments. Let's go back to list comments. And in here, I just wanna say, if we have our comment.children and comment.children.length, now I wanna render out list comments again. And I wanna pass my comments as comment.children. Let's go check this out. So you can see here that we have two replies to this comment up here. And then these replies down here have no replies. Let's go implement this number here. This is going to say how many replies this comment has. So my reply count is going to be comment.children.length. So you can see this comment here has two replies. These ones have zero. Let's go format this reply count. So it says something a little bit nicer. So I'm going to define a function called get reply count text. And then this is going to take a count, which is a number. Then I'm going to say if count is equal to zero, then we're just going to return no replies. If count is equal to one, we're going to return one reply. Otherwise, we're going to return a string and the string is going to have our counts and then the word replies. So we need to use get reply count text and then we're going to pass in our reply count. So you can see here, we get a mysterious zero. The reason we get that is because we have this comment.children.reply count. So we just need to say is greater than zero to make it a conditional to render this list comments. So now that mysterious zero has gone. Let's add a reply to a reply. So I'm gonna say reply to, we can post that. And you can see we have reply to here and that is three levels deep from our main comment. So we have a main comment and then we have a reply that's three levels. Let's add another one, reply three, and we can post this reply. And then we get a comment that is four levels deep. So where would you go from here? Well, if you had a huge comment section, you probably want to add some pagination. So you'd probably want to load your first 20 root comments. And then down the bottom here, you could have some load more text. And when they click it, it loads another 20 root comments. Then inside of each parent comment, on your database level, you could say that this parent has X number of replies, and then they could click some text and it's going to load in the replies for a given parent. You might also want to add an upvote and downvote for each comment, and then you could use that to sort your comments in your database. So that is how to add a nested comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified whenever I release new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.